So yesterday we did add subtract. Today we're looking at uh, multiplication division of these real numbers. Not the fake numbers, right? Just the real ones. And remember, a real number is any number we can do math with. Fractions, decimals, integers. Um, and yesterday we reviewed add subtract. And remember, what were my keywords for add subtract? I'm gonna, Zoomers, I'm going to apologize just the way the screen works. We're going to do rumors for, for these kind of uh, back and forth during the notes right now. What, what, what were my keywords for adding and subtracting integers? Look. We're either going to do two one of two things. Wait, so for adding and subtract... Oh, yeah, they were either going to fight or hug. Fight or hug, right? So they're either going to cancel each other out and one person's victorious, the positive or the negative, or they're going to hug it out and become one bigger, better positive or one bigger, better negative, right? So that gets confusing to some students when they start mixing in multiply, divide, because they work different. But if you focus on concept, you won't make those mistakes. So, just like yesterday, we're going to do an exploration. We're exploring the wonderful world of math. I need, what's that guy's voice that he does all the voiceover stuff on like planet Earth? What's his name? No idea. Anyway, we need a fancy voiceover. So we're going to start with a little 4 times 2, 4 times 1, 4 times 0, 4 times blank, 4 times blank. And I want you guys to fill in and extend my pattern, please. Uh, 4 times zero and zero. Got it. Okay. And then four times negative two would be negative eight. So as we have one less factor of four, our answers are decreasing by four, four which makes sense, right? Yeah. So it looks like when they're both positive and we multiply, we get positive. And when we have one of each, it is negative. negative. Now, I don't have to flip this around and do a negative one times four because we know there's a commutative and associative property of multiplication, meaning if I flip the two uh, factors that I multiply... It's the same, okay? So what's the only other situation I need to test out? I got a positive times positive, one of each. Five. Joe? Negative times negative. And negative times negative, so let's, let's explore some more. So let's do negative 4 times 2, negative 4 times 1, negative 4 times 0. And then we're going we're gonna to fill in and extend our pattern and see what happens. Uh-oh. Did, did I lose them? I'm not hearing anything now, Tanyan. Nor am I. Okay, I hear you now. So negative 4 times 2. What? What's negative 4 times 2? Sorry, my, my video cut out. Okay. Um, negative 4 times 2 equals, because uh, a negative times a positive equals a negative. Mm -hmm. So it's negative 8. Okay. Um, in that same rule, the next one would be negative 4. Okay. Then it's just flat out 0. Yep. Then it goes to, um, it's two negatives multiplied together equal positive. Well, and also check this out. Plus 4, plus 4. I've established a pattern, right? Yeah, then it's 4 and then it's 4. 4 and 8. So because of that pattern, we just proved that when we have a negative times a negative, it is positive. Now, we don't need to prove this. Thank you, Tanyan. Um, we don't need to prove this for um, division because here's why. 4 times 2 is the same thing as 4 divided by 1 half. It's, so there, there's an equivalent there's an equivalency to division to multiplication already. We don't need to reprove that, right? Multiplication is division kind of. Just You can rework them back and forth. So we don't need to reprove that. Where, where, what ends up happening, I'm going to warn you, because kids are always like, yeah, this is easy. One of each negative if they're the same positive. That is kind of easy. But what ends up happening is kids will then mess up this. What do you think is the wrong answer I get from students for negative 6 plus negative 4? 10, 24 with positive. Okay, well, the wrong answer I get for this is 10. 10. And what did they do wrong? Negative Joe? Negative plus a negative. Um, yeah, they're like, oh, two negatives makes a positive. Exactly. So what they did is two negatives makes a positive is a true statement if we're talking about multiply, multiply or divide. But these are two negative things that make a bigger, bad, or negative, right? So that's why, I don't know if you've heard me say this a million times the last two days, I want you to focus on concept rather than rule. That's, that rule, they just applied the rule wrong, right? But they had the right rule for something else. 
But if you go based on concept that fighting or hugging, or the two positives or one of each with the multiplication exploration we just did, if you focus on concept, you're less likely to make that mistake. Does that make sense? Because you'd be like, yeah, I get it. When you mix it all up and there's a lot going on, people freak out. They start not using the frontal lobe as much as they're using other parts of the brain more. The frontal lobe is where you do problem solving. When you're really calm, it's the best. Right? So um, when they freak out, they'll do that. So I'm going to warn you, don't do that. Focus on concepts. So next thing I want to do is I want to practice um, just some fraction and decimal work with you a little more with multiply divide. It's expected you know this being that you're in algebra. But I just want to take a little moment, review it, and then we'll do these positives and negatives with it too. Um, then I'm hoping to do a Quizlet live, at least see how it works together, and then give you some time to work on homework. So let's get cracking. Example one. And usually math in my classes isn't usually like example one, example two, but because of the Zoom and everything at the same time and because it's review, it's going to be a little more teach at you instead of with you. I like discussion-based things more usually. But 6.4 divided by negative 4. And I'll let you know, I usually would write my division as a fraction. Fractions are a division. This is how it looks on the worksheet, though. So another thing organizationally I like to do is... A positive divided by a negative, that's going to pump out what type of answer? One of each. What is that? A negative. Does absolute value matter for multiply divide who wins? Does who's bigger matter? Not at all. Not for, not for multiply divide, right? So I like to slap that negative in my answer right away because it's easy to forget about. I forgot about it before. Anybody ever lose a negative before in math? I've lost, there's been, negatives are like socks in the washer, man, you just lose one sometimes, okay? So, I slap the negative there so I hopefully don't forget it. Then, I'm going to set up my division problem, and I don't have to worry about my symbols in my division problem. There's my 6.4 divided by 4. And then maybe, you know, maybe it's been a minute since you've done the traditional algorithm for dividing, but 4 goes into 6 once. A little trick I do, instead of multiplying down and subtracting, I kind of just know there's two left. And I imagine or write a little 2 next to my 4 there. Just a thing I do instead of writing extra. And so 4 goes into 24 six times. And I make sure I throw up my decimal right above where it was like it's some bad sushi or something, you know. Just throw it up. Right up there. Another thing you should do is estimate. So, like, let's say you got this wrong and you accidentally got 16. Does 4 go into 6 16 times? No, like 1 in, in some, right? So use... I always ask myself when I'm done, does my answer make sense? So if I go write it up here in my answer, look, I maybe would have forgot my negative. But since I plopped it up there to start, it's right there waiting for me. But the, 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 the dividing work, I'm hoping you guys already got it. So we're going we're gonna to try a little tougher division problem, just a little bit. Call this one example two. I've got negative 29.82 divided by negative 2 and a tenth. All right, so we're going to set this up, old school division, 29 and 82 hundredths divided by 2 and 1 tenth. Now here's the deal. I can't have a divisor here that has a decimal. So what do I do? How do I get rid of that decimal? Come here. You add zero. 20, yep, I move it over, make it 21. But if I do that, I also have to move this one over. Yeah. And here's why I can do that. And this is another reason why I like writing my fractions, or my, my division as a fraction. You know how to make an equivalent fraction? You multiply both numerator and denominator by the same number, and then you have the same fraction, just looks different, right? That's all we did. We multiplied everything by 10. Do you see that? So did I change value? I didn't change value, I just changed the way it looks, right? It's the same division problem. That's why you can move the decimal. Did you guys know that? It's the same as the equivalent fraction. Kind of cool, huh? Because I like, sometimes you're like, yeah, move the decimal. But if you understand why you move the decimal, then you're, less, then you're more likely to just be like, that's an option for me to do. So, now that I moved it, 21 goes into 29 how many times? Once, okay. That gives me 8 left over. So I got a little 88 down there now. 21 goes into 88 four times. That's 84. So there's four left over. And it goes into 42, two times. Now, looking at my problem, I had a negative divided by a negative. That pumps out what type of answer? Positive. So 14.2 is my answer. Let's say you screwed up your decimal and you had something like 1.42. Two goes into 
goes into 30 like how many times? Like 15, so you should be close to 15. If you had your decimal point anywhere else, are you anywhere close to 15? No, so it's just a great check at the end, right? Does my answer make sense? I try to ask myself that every time I do something in math. Does my answer make sense? All right. Example three. I'm trying to change up these colors. Be fancy. So I have three and four tenths times negative one and five tenths. So now we're, we're messing with some more decimals, but multiplication. Here's the deal. My answer, positive or negative? Make it with your fingers. Positive or negative? Let's see it. That's a negative. You got negative? Negative, okay. So I'm going to put that right there. Why am I putting it there? And I don't want to forget it, man. I'll lose a negative all day. So when we multiply decimals, I like to just straight up multiply old school. Okay. Notice in the work I'm doing, any decimals yet? Not yet. Nope. So I'm going to multiply 15, 17, drop a 0, 4, 3, 0, 11, 5, 10. Okay? Now, my answer, though, is going to be negative 5, 1, 0. But how many places need to be after the decimal? Two. Two. Two, because, twice. because I moved it once, twice. So, is this better? Thanks, Will, for saying something and not just letting it happen. I appreciate it. Okay, so there's my negative 5.1. Also, if you put it somewhere else, let's, let's like do 3 times 2 to estimate. What's 3 times 2? Six. 6. The only way to get a number close to 6 is by putting the decimal there, right? Right? All right. Uh, you want me to sh Let me explain to you how I would do... I'm going to pause it for the video. So again, just to review, we can change division to multiplication by using the reciprocal, the multiplicative inverse, right? So in this case, I change division to multiplication. I flip my second term. Now notice, did I mess with my first term at all? With flipping? No, not until I cross simplify. You don't have to cross simplify, but life's going to be easier. And that's, that's just a quick review from, you sh we should have done this last year, but it's cool. But we got to bust some rust off sometimes. 